All right, so um, we're from Pomona High School, and today we've been talking about Walt Whitman's Song of Myself. Uh, we just finished talking about Canto 6, and now we're going to go on to Canto 8. We have a new group of students to talk to us about Canto 8. They all read it for their homework. They're ready to go. Um, I want to go and start with the fourth stanza. Fourth stanza. Oh, this is one of my favorites. So I think it's so good. We have to read it, right? So the blab of the pave, right? So um, Nick, can you read the blab of the pave and take us down a little ways? The blab of the pave, tires of carts, slough of boot soles, talk of the promenaders, the heavy, the heavy omnibus, the driver with his interrogating thumb, the clink of the shod horse, horses on the granite floor, the snow slays clinking, shouting jokes, pelting of snowballs, the hurrahs for popular favorites, the flurry aroused mobs, the flap of the curtain litter, a sick man inside born to the hospital. The meeting of enemies, the sudden oath, the blows and fall. The excited crowd, the policeman with his star, gate, star quickly working his passage to the center of the crowd. The impassive stone that receives and returns so many echoes. What groans of the overfed or half-starved who fall sunstruck or in fits. What, gro or what exclamations of women taken suddenly who hurry home and give birth to baby, uh, babes. What living and buried, buried speech is always vibrating here and what howls were stained by decorum. Arrests of criminal sites, adulterous offers made, acceptance, rejections with covex lips. I mind them or the show or response of them. I come and I depart. All right. So we have this... Uh, wonderful stanza. What kind of stands out to us as we look at this stanza? The diction. Okay, what stands about the diction? Yeah. He uh, kind of, instead of using just like common words, he makes it more like detailed. With the diction he uses, it's so much more like alive okay. than it would be if he used just simpler words. All right, yeah, he has some. Let's talk about some examples of these really great words that he uses. Let's um, find some of them. In the first line, he uses promenaders instead mm -hmm. of walkers. Okay, good. What else? Ernie, what else do we like? Um, what's the question? What other words? <laughs> this deep diction just pops to your to your mind. Interrogating. Okay. Consider sure. Great. Nick, what do you think? Uh, the adulterous offers made. Adulterous <laughs> offers yeah. made. Because he could have just said yeah. prostitutes. He could. <laughs> adulterous <laughs> offers made. Justin, what do you think? Uh, hurrahs instead of just them screaming. Yeah. Good. Courtney? Um, I like omnibus. Omnibus. Yeah. Um, and what else do we notice about this, this section? It's a list. It is a list, right? It is structured as a list. Now talk to me about lists. Last time we talked about graphs, this time we're talking about lists. What do we know about lists? Everything in the list usually has something in common sometimes. Okay, everything in the list usually has something in common. Good, what else? It's like describing something, but instead of putting it into sentences, it's picking out certain things for certain parts of the list. Okay, good. What else about lists? It's organizing things so they're easier to understand. Okay, we're organizing things. And sometimes we put lists in a certain order, right? So we say like the number top 10 YouTube videos I've ever seen from Mr. Allen's class or the, um, the top 10 soda pops I've ever drank or whatever, right? But we, we can put them in order. Is he putting these in any specific order? No. Not really. It's Not just really. It's disorganized. Just, it's just there, right? So does any one item in the list have any more importance than any other item in the list? The last line. The last line you think has more importance? Yeah. Why? Well, because it's the it's the only one that has a hyphen in it. Okay. And if you go back to the part right above the stanza, where it says, I, know, I, I note where the pistol has fallen, mm -hmm. it kind of describes that this might be a list of like the problems or something. And it talks about a suicide, and then it ends with, I come and I depart. Okay. Now, uh, Nick kind of points towards there being negative things in the list, right? Do we agree that there's some negative imagery in this list? Yeah. Yeah, so let's talk about what are some of the negative images? 
in the list? The adulterous offers. Yeah, that would be negative. Adulterous <laughs> offers, yeah. Justin, what else? Uh, the groans of overfed and or half starved. Okay. Yep, groans of overfed, half starved. Hannah? Uh, the meeting of enemies, the sudden oath, the blows and falls. Okay, good. Ernie, what else is negative? A sick man inside born to the hospital. Okay. Is there positive images in here too, though? Yeah. Yeah, like what? The excited crowd. Okay, excited crowd. The snow sleighs clinking, shouted jokes. Pelts of snowballs, mm -hmm. yeah. Good. What else? The policeman with the star. Okay. And he's, the policeman's trying to, you know, like, do their job, mm -hmm. right? Get the bad guys. Nick, what other positive Uh things? The talk of the promenaders. Yeah. So we have this city scene, right, where most of the cantos that we've seen have been very nature, um, you know, driven. This is a city scene, right? We have the blab of the pave. So I think we need now to talk about that phrase and what we think the blab of the pave means. Let's start with the easy word. What's pave? Like pavement. Pavement, yeah. pavement, right? So street. So the blab of the pave. What's blab? Talk. Talk? Yeah. What? Just sounds. Cacophony. Sounds. Cacophony. I like that. Good, good uh, diction right there. What else? Blab of the pave. Mm, instead of like the talking standpoint, another word that I think of when I hear blab is just like, it's just kind of there. So it's just like. This blab. omnipresent noise, yeah. maybe? Mm, yeah. Gossip, maybe. Like maybe that. gossip, maybe the blab. So, gossip. but. Would Emily Dickinson use a word like blab? No. no, right? And if you remember from from stanza two, what was Walt Whitman saying? He, what's his words? The sound of my, the sound of my blank words of my voice, sound of the belched words, belched words right? Is, is blab kind of a belched word? Yeah. yeah, it's just bleh, blab, right? We got to get it out there. It's it's not a pretty word. It's a, a very common, you know, like Emily Dickinson wouldn't be using the word blab, right? So is this passage kind of representative of the blab of the pave? Yes. 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 It's everything, right? We get this scene and it's it comes to us so fast that we can't really digest all the different little pieces of it. We have to slow down and look at them individually. Um, but it's a, a real beautiful passage. So let's talk though about whether Walt Whitman likes civilization and society or does not like civilization and society. We know he likes nature because he went out and talked about it, but let's talk about how does he feel about the city? I feel like he's kind of on the fence about the city because in this passage he talks about negative things in the city but he also points out the positive things in the city mm -hmm. so I think he's kind of like in between. Bernie what do you think? Well I feel like the last line answers that question where it says I mind them or the show of renaissance of them I come and I depart. Okay talk to us. I feel like he like he like minds them it's all right but like he like comes and goes as he wants to. Okay how much you can tolerate them. Cordell. So I kind of catch that uh, Walt Whitman, he feels the same way about the city as he does in society even in the previous cantos. Like he kind of, there's this like corruption of the innate human nature, the beautiful nature that comes with the pistols and prostitutes and you know, the hood stuff. <laughs> the, <laughs> the hood stuff, which totally Walt Whitman was. Of the hood. Yeah, of the hood back, <laughs> back in that time period. 1855 hood yeah that was good times <laughs> so we're kind of I mean does he feel like society is necessary no yeah society is necessary no oh, what do you think um, I think he doesn't feel that way because um, of kind of like what Ernie was saying I mind them or the show or residents of them I come and I depart he personally I feel like he chooses to not engage in society so you would think that it's unnecessary, but that's just my viewpoint. Okay. Any other ideas? Is society a necessity? Uh, not in his views, it seems like, because he has like both far ends of the spectrum that are even better off than the worse are. It just seems that no one gets like the better hand. I think Walt Whitman thinks it is necessary because in all of these cantos, he talks about nature, but in this like particular cantos. 
he chooses to point out cities. And then he's saying, I mind them or show the residents of them, I come and I depart. So he's saying he comes and goes, but he's saying that it is necessary for like every now and then to be in the city mm -hmm. with other people. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Courtney more on that side because, um, you know, he, he feels like we go and we retreat out into nature and we get a better understanding of who we are as ourselves right individuals but then we come back into the city and we can see these other pieces that make us into human beings as well i think he feels that the society is necessary we have to have society we have to have civilization but sometimes it's nice to get away from it all right mm -hmm. there's one phrase that i want us now to focus on because i think it's super important so three lines from the end says what living and buried speech is always vibrating here what howls restrained by decorum what howls restrained by decorum let's talk about that phrase what howls restrained by decorum what's decorum mean yeah well, what's decorum isn't it like superficial <coughs> decoration like no no it does sound like decoration right isn't what? it order it's no not necessarily an order does somebody out in the audience or out in the class look it up isn't it how you uh, present yourself? It's like being very proper. Yes, if you have decorum, yes, you're very proper. You follow the rules. You do what you're supposed to, right? So what howls restrained by decorum? I right? think it's to do with, um, I guess, going in along with like the themes from his previous poems or the previous uh, cantos, mm -hmm. it's um, to do with the restraint of the human mind and the natural flow by society's normalities. Yes, right? I agree. Like, go. I agree with Hannah. It's saying that you're expected to present yourself in a certain way, so you restrain yourself from actually like being who you are. Mm -hmm. You restrain your belches, right? Yeah, yeah. go. Ernie. Uh, well, I think it's like decorum, like you got like the shell where like you're fake on the outside, but you're like howling on the inside to like mm. get out. And howl is such an animalistic word, right? Like that's, that's that belch that he's talking about in Canto 2. And we're gonna come back to that later, right? In Canto 52, we're gonna visit this idea of belching your words out and not being restrained by decorum. Would you say that um, Walt Whitman's poems are being restrained at all? No. No. He's, uh, well, Go ahead, Hannah. I thought it was like going along with the what howls restrained by decorum, I think his poems are those howls that have been restrained by decorum. But no longer. Right. Right? Yeah. Like poetry has been restrained by decorum, but no longer. You can see it in his line lengths, mm -hmm. right? They're just belches out on the page and they're just there, right? There's nothing restrained at all in any of his words. Going along with the line lengths, I just think it shows how much he has to say about society or nature and he's just letting it out. Yeah, just blah, go. Mm -hmm. And isn't that better for poetry, mm -hmm. right? Like Emily Dickinson, her howls are restrained by decorum. Walt Whitman is the total opposite. His is just out on the page and we get truth that way, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that a better way to get truth? Just yeah. put it all out there. Mm -hmm. Straight to the point. Almost. Straight to the point, I like it. All right, that's all we have time for, for Canto 8, thanks. Oh, oh, my God. God. <laughs>